Welcome to the BFS E! News Podcast. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. And we have changed up our theme music, thanks to our wonderful jazz teacher here at Brooklyn Brent School, Jessica Jones. That is from her album Moxie called Manhattan. I think I'm going to keep that one. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. William Shakespeare When was the first time you were turned on by William Shakespeare? I'll tell you, it was when I was about 16, and a friend of mine, who had a driver's license and a very cool MG, took me for a drive down... Route 206 to Princeton and the McCarter Theater, where we saw this extraordinarily beautiful but simple production of The Tempest. And I remember it was about halfway through the first act when my brain acclimated to the language and all was made clear. On today's show, we will be talking with a lot of people about William Shakespeare. And you'll be seeing images from the play that is happening on Friday and Saturday night here in the upper school, A Midsummer's Night's Dream. So let's get right to it with Paul Romano's report. Andy, the most extraordinary experience I've had with Shakespeare was when I went to see a production of Hamlet at Middlebury College's Breadloaf School of English in Vermont. It was up in the mountains in a barn, and it was rainy that day. And the show got off to a great start. I was really impressed by the actor playing Hamlet. And then all of a sudden, there was a power outage in the theater. And all the lights went out. And it seemed to be at like the most perfect time when Hamlet was uh, speaking to his father, who was a ghost. And it was scary, and it was beautiful. But the most beautiful aspect of the whole thing was when the stage crew came out with candles, set up candles all all throughout the stage and even in the audience a little bit and we watched the rest of the show in relative darkness and it was beautiful and that is why I love the theater because you can you never know what's gonna happen what is your um, favorite Shakespeare play or even your favorite Shakespeare experience well you know I saw a film version of Henry V a long time ago and started showing it in the classroom and uh, I actually think it's a really good play for our times, considering today is January 20th. Oh, wow. I'd have to say Taming of the Shrew. I saw it li- a live performance of it up in Stratford, in um, the theater up there. I was at Stratford-on-Avon in Canada. Amazing facility. I just love Kate's power, strength, rebelliousness. When I was in grade school, uh, our reading specialist would come in and read to us, and right after fourth grade, he left to go to Ashland and join the Shakespeare or a troupe up in the Ashland area and uh, about 10 years later I went up with my family to the Shakespeare Festival in Ashland, Oregon and saw him perform in Macbeth and I'll never forget it. It was amazing. I played Helena in Midsummer Night's Dream in high school and designed the costumes and I got pneumonia. That's not my favorite part. (laughs) Romeo and Juliet in ninth grade English class because we all had to memorize a part and I nailed it. Love Hamlet, and I went to Helsingor and I visited the castle in Denmark. And it was a rainy, cold, horrible day, and I could just see why Hamlet would go crazy. Liz, the word on the street is that you, uh, you hate William Shakespeare. Is that true? <laughs> Absolutely not. I think that Shakespeare is maybe the best writer ever, which I know is a big statement because I love all the writers. My favorite Shakespeare experience is reading a play that I've read before or seeing a production of a play that I know pretty well 
and finding that I am drawn to a character I never paid much attention to before or that one particular scene suddenly stands out to me and realizing that every time I read the play or see the play, it's a new experience. Very cool. How many times do you think you have seen Shakespeare? I, I don't even think it's possible to count. This month alone, I think I'm seeing three different productions. <laughs> Some young actors came to do a Shakespeare presentation in our school, and they were terrible. So I said to my friend, you know, we could do better than this. So I became a producer of a company called Shakespeare for Schools. And we hired young actors, and we cut the plays down to about 20 minutes in length, reading and cutting and trying to get to the heart of the matter and what were the most popular uh, Shakespeare plays. So what are the most popular Shakespeare's plays? Macbeth and Romeo and Juliet. I remember my first experience with Shakespeare in ninth grade with my English teacher. She just made it so accessible to like us in the classroom, like where we acted it out and heard it and watched the movie. And I absolutely love the comedies more than I do the tragedies. I'm like, I mean, who wouldn't? But Twelfth Night is one of my favorite ones specifically because you have an array of characters that just are all kooky and they're silly and like you're wondering like how is this even possible and of course you remember it's a play so anything can be possible within it how do you feel about william shakespeare i mean he's good are you a big fan um i would say i'm an i'm an like a five out of ten maybe like a four like yeah <laughs> I don't know. What's your favorite Shakespeare play? Hamlet. What is it about Hamlet that you like? I really like the, um, I like that everybody dies. Everybody dies. Yeah, that's right, Milo, so you're opening in a week. Are you nervous? Yes, very. Um, we, uh, I know for me, I have a couple monologues that are very, very rough right now. Um, a lot of the class is also having a lot of trouble with um, memorization. We've had less than less than two months to from the start to beginning of this whole process. So it's a little bit rushed and a little bit scary, but this happens to every play. So I'm confident it'll be good in the end. And it's, it's important to have fun of it also. So if a mistake does happen, we'll just roll with it. I play Peter Quince, one of the rude mechanicals in A Midsummer Night's Dream. And how's it going so far? It's really fun. It's nice to like see how the play is coming together as we go along with all the costumes and stuff. Um, I think it's going pretty well. Do you like Shakespeare in general? Um, I don't hate him. <laughs> what is one thing you're looking forward to opening night? Um, probably just seeing how the audience like reacts or if like the laughs that were put into the play originally come through. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Paul. How are you today? I'm good. So I heard you're in uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah. What part do you play? I'm Helena in a Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> Can you explain what Hel who Helena um, is? Um, Helena is um, one of the main characters. She's one of the lovers and she's in love with Demetrius. But Demetrius doesn't love her back. He loves her best friend. And her best friend is in love with someone else. And basically, I have to try to win him back. And there's a lot of magic and stuff that goes into it. So, But in the end, it turns out okay. Okay, and um, have you had to dig deep for your motivations? Yeah, I guess so. Because, like, you know, I'm used to seeing these kids in my grade. It's like to have to pretend to be in love with them is like interesting. That's fine. How about um, what was your favorite thing about the experience so far? We decided to make it based in the 90s and like we had that conversation of why and like just being able to like go more in depth with like costumes and background and stuff like that. Final question. Yeah. Are you nervous about opening night? Uh, I'm more so nervous about performing doing the premiere for the high school and middle school because like those are like the kids I go to school with whereas like most of the time the performance is like my friend my parents and like my cousins. Jazz you're doing tech on A Midsummer Night's Dream? I am. How's it different doing Shakespeare? It's different doing Shakespeare because I have to understand more of what Shakespeare's saying to understand how the tech should work so I know 
why the props are being moved in certain places if I understand what's actually happening, which is more difficult now that it's Shakespeare. You know, I have to understand the language more to understand why the lights might be a certain way or why the props are in a certain place. How is this production different than other productions of A Midsummer Night's Dream? It's different primarily in the way that it's being interpreted by both the director, Catherine, and also the individual actors, because they've all put their own pieces of themselves into their characters. I'm here with Catherine Clark, director of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Catherine, how's the experience been so far? It's been really challenging doing Shakespeare. I have not taken that on before. We've done we've done Brecht, we've done restoration comedy, but we've never done Shakespeare. So doing that work in the length of time we have to put a production together has been really challenging and really intense. You haven't ever done Shakespeare here at BFS? I have not directed Shakespeare here at BFS. Did you consciously avoid Shakespeare? Or? You know, I don't tell the English department, but Shakespeare is not my favorite playwright. Um, I think there's a lot of great Shakespeare plays, but a lot of them I could take or leave. Um, so for me, it was about just having that right moment where I saw that I had the right students to play certain roles. and. I remember being in auditions for the short plays we did last year and seeing some of those students and thinking, I want that person to be Puck, I want that person to be Bottom, and sort of the students leading me to this play. And you're doing an interesting twist on, on the story this time around. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So we're setting it in an American high school. Um, and we had, I had originally gone with the idea of an American high school in the 1980s, sort of a um, John Hughes movie feel. But the students convinced me that the early 90s would be a better choice. They were very interested in 90s culture, which was my high school experience. So it's been a little interesting revisiting that musically and in terms of fashion. But when, we, when, you know, when I looked at the play, the themes are so high school, the, the fickle love and not wanting to do what your parents tell you to do and arguing in the halls just it seems so high school to me so we're um we're sort of setting it around a homecoming dance and um using that as our framing and you're a week away from opening night we are are you feeling confident you know this is always a a, a rough place in the process where uh some things are coming together and some things feel a little rough but um just the progress we've made over the course of the week has been really amazing. I think it's going to be in great shape. Okay, I can't wait. Thanks. Break a leg. I'm here with um, Sydney Bridges, head of the upper school, and I don't think it's uh, an overstatement to say a lover of William Shakespeare, his plays, his sonnets. Sydney, is it okay if I ask you what's your favorite Shakespeare play? Certainly Macbeth is one of them, Hamlet... A Midsummer Night's Dream, those stand out. Julius Caesar, because that's kind of where my relationship with with Shakespeare started. And I, I do remember the uh, Antony's uh, funeral or- oration as being one of the most passages in, in Shakespeare in terms of use of language to persuade, which is something that we want to teach our students. Um, it's an important skill. Speaking of specific passages, do you have any favorite Shakespeare quotes that you'd like to recite for us? Very much connected to comes from Macbeth. You know, she should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays might fool the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle, life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. The raising of the curtain on the human condition, I think that's what's really powerful to me. Each person who encounters Shakespeare has his or her own, their own um, reading and visualization. I, I, you know, so that's part of the, the transaction. I did want to ask you, Sydney, about, um, about comedy. 
one of my favorites to teach is A Midsummer Night's Dream, although I do think sometimes the comedies are more difficult to teach, and I think it's also partially because of the the built-in confusion that's there in terms of identities and characters and wearing masks and, and, and all of that. There's great range in A Midsummer Night's Dream. There's also all of the elusive stuff to mythology and witty wordplay and 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 humor and uh i think that's you know obviously a, a, a very important part of the our 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 human lives is to be able to to laugh i think at our at ourselves so what about mm-hmm. as an english teacher when you teach shakespeare in class sydney mm-hmm. do you have students act out the different yes parts? yeah so that's one of the great things and i my my problem is my challenge is to keep my seatbelt on because i like i'm I'm sort of like uh, bottom from a midsummer night's dream if i had my way i would <laughs> uh you know attempt to, to sort of play every part but the students are much better at it at, than <laughs> i the the great thing about teaching uh, the plays is you're learning. It's a it's the reciprocal process. I don't know. I sat in, I think it was Brian Chu's class <laughs> earlier this year, and I think they were discussing Macbeth, and some students raised a question about an aside or a, a scene direction that I had never considered. So I had an epiphany, and it was it was great. So that's part of what makes the the journey a a, a good one. And Shakespeare, because you know, was a person of his time. I, I think you know some people have have you know, made him out to be a, you know, a, a god. I do think in some ways, if he did exist, he's a, you know, a secular prophet. But, you know, he was a person of his, of his time with, you know, his own cultural biases and all those things. And, and I think that's also sort of something important that when you're reading the plays, you want to talk about the historical context. And, yeah, so... Thank you so much, Sydney. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul, for that wonderful report. And thank you, staff and students and faculty, for your many contributions to today's show. Also remember, to thine own self be true, and to let your life speak. <laughs>